Hello, everyone. My name is Adam Glazer, and I'm a senior scientist here at the Allen Institute for Neural Dynamics, working in the multi-scale molecular anatomy team. And today I'm going to give you an overview of um, a new methodology we've been working on called expansion-assisted selective plane illumination microscopy, or XSPIM for short. And so we've been developing this new approach um, really with mapping brain-wide neural circuits in mind. Um, and this is not a new sort of scientific endeavor. <clears throat> Mapping neural circuits has been pursued by um, several academic groups and institutions, for example, the Mouse Light Project, as well as um, the FMOS techniques. And from an imaging perspective, um, this is an extremely challenging problem because, for example, with the mouse brain, this means that we need to trace neurons um, over centimeter scale because neurons can travel all the way across the brain from one brain region to another. Um, but we really need nanoscale resolution to accurately trace the axons of these neurons, which means um, extremely high resolution over a very large volume. And so how this has been done using prior approaches is really um, sort of sectioning based approaches where you would image from above and sort of cut your way in, in many, many slices, making your way through the, the brain. Um, and so in this process, um, many, many individual imaging tiles and slices would be generated uh, which is very, very difficult to put back together. Um, and also these imaging experiments could take, for example, one week or more. Um, and many, many things can go wrong over such a long time scale. Um, additionally, the imaging methods that have been used um, in these prior approaches uh, have significantly better um, lateral or sort of XY resolution than they do in Z, which actually makes them or limits the, the capability of these methods to sort of have the sufficient resolution to trace these axons um, sufficiently. And so within um, neural dynamics here at the Allen Institute, we've been working on sort of two new innovations to tackle this problem. One um, that I'm gonna sort of introduce to you and you'll learn more about in um, a future presentation by Xiaoyun Zheng will be a new custom microscope. Um, and this is really paired with a new method for whole brain expansion, um, which again, another um, neural dynamics team member, Naveen, um, will tell you about in another presentation. And the advantage of our approach is that the imaging times are much shorter. We can complete this actually in just one day. Um, due to the microscope technology we're using, the resolution is actually sort of near isotropic, meaning that the Z resolution is almost as good as X and Y. And we can actually do all of this with very few tiles, um, just a dozen tiles to cover the entire brain. And so as I mentioned, uh, sort of the first innovation is the whole brain tissue expansion. And what I mean by this is um, we can take the, the mouse brain in its sort of native size, and by doing some different um, chemical treatments, we can actually physically expand or make the mouse brain larger while at the same time making the mouse brain extremely transparent. And this allows us to effectively increase, increase the resolution um, that we can image this brain with um, with any given optic. Um, so not really pushing hard on the optic side, but rather enlarging the tissue to improve resolution. And again, um, Naveen um, will be telling you more about this um, in a future presentation. And so the microscopy approach um, that we are going to use to image these brains is known as selective plane illumination microscopy, um, or light sheet microscopy, as it's also known um, in the field. And um, without going into the details too much, I think the main take home message is that unlike a traditional um, microscopy system where you may have just one imaging objective, which you both deliver and collect light back through, in light sheet microscopy, you have two optical paths um, and they're oriented in most cases at 90 degrees to one another. So one is used to deliver a light sheet to the tissue and that light sheet is sort of aligned perfectly at the imaging plane or the, the focus of the second objective, which images that onto a very, very high speed camera. And so light sheet microscopy is extremely fast. It's also extremely gentle. And so it's really been transformative in fields um, such as developmental biology, but also because of its speed is really finding um, applications for sort of large scale anatomical imaging, um, which is why we're leveraging it for our approach.
And so um, myself as sort of a optical designer and um, microscopy system um, developer, um, when we think about building one of these uh, light sheet microscopes, arguably the most important decision is um, what is the what are the imaging objectives going to be? And to date, this has really been focused only on life sciences microscopy options. And when we think about once we select a lens, um, how would we want to engineer the system? What is really a wish list of items we'd want? Um, one would be we'd like micron scale resolution to be able to see the, the objects we want to resolve. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we'd want a large field of view so that we don't have to tile too much across a large imaging volume. Um, we'd want the lenses to have long working distances so that we can actually image large volumes without cutting. Um, we'd like the light sheet design to have high isotropy in that the Z resolution is um, as good or close to as good as the X and Y resolution, um, and we'd want to go fast. And when you look at life science optics, sort of all of the vendors, um, their offerings sort of fall into a, a similar spec range in that if you want, for example, a, a lateral resolution of a few microns, the working distance is probably going to be less than a centimeter. The field of view will be a few millimeters. And really, when you pair it with a camera, the number of pixels of information that that lens is capturing and sending to the camera is probably less than 10 megapixels. And so in this new system, we've really decided to not just scale up the brain through expansion, but also scale up the imaging system, specifically by choosing new lenses from the electronics metrology space. And when you start to look at the um, optics that are available in that industry, they have tremendous specifications. For example, for the same resolution of just say one to two microns, the working distances of these lenses can be several centimeters. The fields of view can also be several centimeters. And actually the amount of information that they are transmitting to the camera is on the order of hundreds of meg megapixels. And so tremendous specifications compared to life science lenses. And so if we look at these sort of in the lab, um, on the left, I'm showing arguably one of the largest uh, life science objectives, but it's actually dwarfed by one of these electronics metrology lenses um, that we've purchased and are using in our new systems. And similarly with the camera, um, scientific CMOS cameras with sort of four megapixels is, has been the standard in light sheet microscopy for a while, but actually there's large format CMOS sensors available um, in the metrology space that have, for example, 151 megapixels. And actually these large format CMOS sensors can go even faster than um, scientific CMOS sensors in terms of how many pixels per second they're able to capture. And so this is a photograph of our um, prototype new light sheet system in the lab. And it's a little difficult to see, but sort of if I annotate some cartoons in magenta there, you can see where the electronics metrology lens would be. And it's um, capturing uh, imaging content and sending it sort of to the back right of the image onto that large format CMOS sensor. And if we characterize the system and sort of look at what is the resolution across the massive field of view, um, it's actually extremely uniform. And as I mentioned, um, we have near isotropic resolution in this system. So in the top right, you can see um, averaged point spread functions of the microscope, um, which is extremely tight in X and Y and almost as good uh, in the Z direction. And so uh, if we were to list out the specifications of the microscope, um, it has a resolution of about one micron in X and Y two and a half microns in Z, a field of view of about a centimeter squared, um, and really a throughput when we sort of go back to the application of mapping mouse brains, we can do about 50 centimeters cubed of volume, um, volumetric imaging per day, or about one mouse brain per day. Um, but the system can actually accommodate even larger tissues up to four by 10 by six centimeters. Um, and this is all captured at a rate of nearly um, two gigabytes per second. And Xiaoyun Jiang is going to tell you about uh, more about the details of the microscope in another presentation. And so equally as important as um, the new hardware itself, um, another big aspect that we've been focusing on is actually how to wrangle the data and how to do large scale data acquisition and also how to process, uh, how to create a processing pipeline around such a um, large data set uh, project. And so the first part of that is actually um, the acquisition software that we have on the computer controlling the microscope. And so really the challenge here is um, we are saving data at almost two gigabytes per second, 
And so we need to write um, custom acquisition software, which is going to allow us to reliably stream data at this high rate over very long um, imaging experiments. And then the, uh, the second part is we need to be able to transfer the data off of the local computer since we do not have um, hundreds of terabytes of storage on, on the actual acquisition workstation. And so we've been working on ways to transfer the data at very high speeds that outpace the microscope onto a temporary storage server. Um, in our case, we've gone with a, a storage server from uh, vast data systems. And once, once the data lands on this temporary server, <clears throat> we read the data in in real time using the um, high performance computing cluster in the building. And we compress the data losslessly about five to 10 X. And then we save the data in the czar format. And once the data is in the czar format, we then actually transfer the data directly to the cloud, um, either with Amazon or Google. Um, and then we'll delete it locally off that temporary vast server. Uh, so that we don't ever overfill and run out of room. And in its current state, what's exciting is we're actually able to keep, uh, we're capable of handling hundreds of terabytes per day, which means that um, at the moment, we're able to have a bandwidth of imaging about two brains per week. Um, and hopefully soon we'll be able to scale to six brains per week. And you'll hear more about this processing pipeline in um, other presentations from Neural Dynamics members. Uh, Joshua Vasquez is going to talk about the acquisition software. Michael Woodard is going to talk about the graphical user interface for the microscope. And Cameron is going to talk about some of the downstream um, processing steps that I mentioned. So once the data is fully um, stitched, processed, compressed, um, it arrives in the cloud. And what we're able to do is use this um, Horta cloud, which is based on the Genelia workstation software, to actually visualize our data sets through a web interface <clears throat> and actually um, manually annotate um, and soon hopefully automatically um, annotate and segment the neurons of interest. And so in this video, you can see me sort of scrolling around through one of the representative data sets. Um, and you're gonna hear more about this sort of neuron segmentation um, part of the pipeline um, from Anna Grimm um, later in the series. And so we really think that um, this is a substrate for future innovation, this idea of building light sheet microscopes around um, electronics metrology technologies, and also pairing it with expansion to sort of get at um, higher resolution um, than you would typically be able to without expansion. And so if we look at the current microscope, <clears throat> it um, provides um, a resolution of about one micron, as I mentioned, over a field of view of a centimeter squared, and it has a working distance of about 40 millimeters. And we are, you know, another thing that we could actually do with this microscope um, that we aren't pursuing, but I think would be a tremendous um, application would be that you could image a whole cleared mouse brain uh, without any expansion, but with no tiling. The field of view would be big enough to actually capture the entire brain um, in just one Z stack, um, which could really improve efficiency um, for other imaging pipelines. And what's interesting is if you're willing to sort of go a little bit lower in resolution, for example, um, perhaps applications looking at non-human primate or human brains where we have to pull back on the resolution, um, there are even more impressive lenses that are available with longer working distances and much, much larger fields of view. And finally, um, to go even higher in resolution, we are exploring um, a custom lens fabrication um, which would double the resolution of the system while still allowing us to image whole intact mouse brains. Um, and this would be tremendously exciting for doing things such as sort of single molecule imaging um, or synaptic level imaging across the entire mouse brain. Um, and we're excited to pursue this in the next few years. And um, I should mention that we're also hoping to support dissemination to early adopters through open hardware and software um, starting in um, the middle part of 2023. And so with that, um, you will hear sort of more in-depth coverage of many of the different topics that I just discussed. For example, the whole brain expansion, um, the actual light sheet hardware, the acquisition software, the user interface for the microscope, um, large-scale data handling, and finally, neuron segmentation. Thank you.